there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to be sharing with you guys today a really big tip that I find makes my life a whole lot easier. <laughs> so I'm going to start off by making some strips of cardstock. Now I am using some Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. This has become my absolute go-to when I am blending inks because it makes my life easier and I am all for that. Now I am just trimming off some strips, I am not measuring anything, just do whatever takes your fancy here to make life easy. Then I often get asked about my ink dobbers and how I store them, how I label them, how I use them, and this is the storage that I use for the Simon Hurley dye inks. So this is a scrapbook.com uh, dobber kind of storage case, and I think there is 30 that come in that little case there. And I have labeled each one with a label maker and every ink has a separate um, ink dauber just for the Simon Hurley range. When it comes to my Distress Oxide inks, I generally have a light and a dark for each of my um, kind of colors. So there'll be like a light green and a dark green and then a light blue and a dark blue dauber. So that's how I kind of do those. And I am just going for a sort of gradient ombre look for every single strip. Now this could obviously be done with any inks at all, but I today am choosing to use my Simon Hurley dye inks and I'm using Guppy, Overzealous, Crown Me and Clear Skies. This was just simply a really nice kind of ink combination that I wanted. So any ink combination you could make work for whatever your occasion was. And for doing these smaller strips, I definitely find that the ink dobbers are a better tool than using like um, the mini ink blending tools. I find that I have much more control and because it's a really small space that I am blending, then the ink dobbers do the job really well. So I'm just using these four colors and then I will repeat them over again. But you could obviously just keep going with all different colors or use less colors and repeat them. Now this next step is completely optional, you certainly don't have to do this, but I was going through my stash and was like, hey, I haven't used these in a long time. So these are the Lawn Fawn Stitched Borders, and I have no idea if these are still available. If they are, I will link everything that I can possibly find down below, um, but sometimes things are discontinued and I just really love to still use them. You could skip this step if you don't have something similar, or you could just draw on like a dotted line or some sort of um, line with a white gel pen. That would look really good as well. Now here is my tip. I see all these beautiful cards that are lined up so nicely and I often get frustrated when I try it myself. So <laughs> to make my life easier, I often use acetate to hide how I do things. Not necessarily hide, but kind of hide in plain sight. So for this task here, I am adding all of my strips with some double-sided tape down onto a sheet of acetate because I want my strips to be smaller than my card base and I want them all to have nice neat edges obviously, but I was kind of figuring out I would have to do a lot of measuring and <laughs> hope that I was measuring well in order for me to get this straight on a card and get it all even and get the edges nice and lined up and for me not to cut a strip too short. So for me, this is just a much easier way. Now I started with a piece of acetate that was four by five and a quarter inches, which would leave a really nice border um, around with my card base. But if you hadn't already done that, then you could just use a trimmer and cut the acetate as well as the strips all at the same time down to the size that you needed. But because I knew that the acetate was the right size, I was able to just use a nice long pair of scissors and scoot around the outside and everything was perfectly lined up. There was no measuring involved for me and it still looks like I placed everything perfectly on the card when in reality I actually had everything perfectly lined up before it even got near the card. So that helps me out a whole lot and I really love the look of this kind of nice easy design. So just a couple of finishing touches to turn this into a card. I'm going to use some rainy day ink from, this is actually a scrapbook.com ink, but any sort of gray ink. I didn't want to do black because I felt like that would just stand out a little too much. And I really do want the background to shine on this card. So I don't want the sentiment or anything else to overpower that. So I've just popped it on a simple little banner die. And then using this butterfly die, there is a butterfly and then there is the outline die. 
I cut out the butterfly in some white 110 pound Nina Solar white paper just so that it was really nice and sturdy. And then just to kind of dress it up a tiny little bit, I'm going to dip it in gold embossing powder. So to do that, I just use a little bit of low tech tape. You could just use a post-it note tape to mask it off and added some Versamark sticky embossing ink and then some Ranger gold embossing powder. And I'm going to melt it on there. Make sure that you take off the um, sticky bit first because we don't want any embossing powder melting where it shouldn't be. And then that way it kind of looks like a gold dipped butterfly. And by popping it on that vellum background, it just helps stand out a tiny little bit as well. Now, as I said, I wanted these to stand out and I've got a couple of different uh, sized foam pieces here just because I had different size strips and I'm going to pop up each one of these on a piece of foam. As I said, I want it to look like each one was kind of placed down and popped up nice and evenly and perfectly when, as I said before, <laughs> I actually had a little bit of help and it was all pre-planned. So you could also skip the step and just pop it straight down onto the paper as well. So either either would work. Now because I am putting this down onto my card base and this foam tape is nice and sticky, I want to make sure everything is lined up because I've gone to all this work so far to make sure things look lined up. So to do that I am going to add some liquid glue. This is the Ranger Multi Medium in the matte finish. And I'm going to add this to the back of the foam tape. Now, again, you could just not use foam tape and you could just use fun foam or you could just pop it up using some more layers of white cardstock. But either, either way, this allows me to wiggle it around and again, make sure that it is all nicely lined up. And you can see it has that really nice white border around the outside without me having to measure perfectly and make sure all of the edges uh, were cut nicely. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure that there are dyes out there that do this, uh, but I don't have them and I don't need them because I have this way to do things. So I am popping my little gold dip butterfly just with a little bit of um, liquid glue down the center and then my sentiment is popped up with a bit of foam tape straight in the middle. Then just for a couple of finishing touches, I'm adding some glitter enamel dots and kind of popping them on the colors of cardstock that they coordinate with. And then that is going to be it for my card today. I hope this little tip helps you in some way by using acetate as kind of a hidden in plain sight um, helping hand. Let me know down in the comment section down below if this is something that you are keen to try out. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.